AI-powered tools that will let advertisers automatically find the best ad placements across the company's services. But on the very same day, the EU also charged Google on anti-competitive ad practices and said it could see a breakup of its ad tech business. And just this morning, B of A raised its price target on Meta, saying that company is well-suited in the generative advertising business thanks to its AI integration. And it's not just the mega cap players. My next guest just announced his firm's first AI-powered tools. Joining me now is Mark Douglas. He is the CEO of Mountain. Mark, are you in Cannes? I will be in Cannes next week. I'm actually in the Maldives vacationing before Cannes, uh, having a you great know, time. It's a, it's a tough one, this one. But uh, no, because I know that Cannes is going to be a place where people are really bringing attention to some of these new tools. How transformative are they? Like, Give us an example of kind of ad business before and ad business after AI. Well, what, I think what Mountain, what we're focused on initially is the creative end of it. And so providing tools that make building creative and getting a lot of versions of creative a lot easier, a lot less time consuming. We're orienting those actually towards professionals um, to make the professional creator just so much more productive. And then, but I think what you're also gonna see is the whole media buying process is gonna become more and more automated, which is a big change for the industry. And, and what are you guys specifically doing? Is it Viva? Yeah, so we call it Viva. And so the idea here, is there's a lot of steps in the creative process, everything from storyboarding to maybe there's some um, seconds or even 10, 20 seconds you need for a commercial. And so you can go into Viva and you can mix in essentially stock video, generative video, you can storyboard so the customer can see what they're gonna get before they get the finished product even if you're doing production. So we just want to take the entire creative process and streamline it and make it a lot faster so customers get know exactly what they're getting and they get a lot more versions of it at the end. If advertising becomes a tool, you know, that can be tagged on to any platform, is the creative industry itself at risk here? I don't think so. I, you know, there's obviously a lot of people who think that AI, you know, kind of threatens the livelihood of a lot of people. I'm more in the Mark and Driesen camp where I think the productivity gains are actually going to just make every, you know, are going to create more jobs. And, and like I said, we're centering what we do around the professional um, because I think at the end of the day, you as a consumer of this stuff, you don't want to become a videographer. What you want is your videographer to produce what you want in a lot less time and get you exactly what you wanted at the end. It's, and so we're, we're focused more on that. And we think that's where it's going to go. It sounds like it would be fun to play around with, honestly, just you know, to kind of just see what these tools could do. So let me ask you, who do you think are the winners across, you know, big tech or some of the platform, you know, and who are the losers as we enter this new uh, age of this technology? Well, you know, so everyone is initially thinking, obviously, OpenAI and, and Microsoft and Google. There's a huge open source um, effort underway in the AI arena that I think has developed so fast that it's a little below the surface. But in two, if you think back to 2000 when Google launched, they had like four years to perfect search before anyone really paid attention. Or And now you're not getting that. It's like three months and OpenAI is already getting significant competition from like open source developers. And so I think it's gonna play out a lot differently than people think. I think open source, free AI, open source gonna play a big role in how AI develops. And still benefit the big tech platforms? Yeah, I mean, at the end, I think they benefit in some way. You know, a really interesting thing is um, Facebook released an early version of the AI platform, and it unknowingly or kind of without their cooperation got leaked. And now there's all these open source developers developing around Facebook's platform. <laughs> And Facebook keeps whatever those developers create. Some people think they did it deliberately. <laughs> and so they, so basically, the open source development makes a lot more competitive. And ultimately, the big platforms make it usable for the average consumer. So I think it's a win-win. And But it's not going to be just this like one winner like you had in search. Well, I remember Jim Cramer early on saying he thinks advertising is going to be the biggest area of impact for AI. And, and everything you're saying, it sounds like that's going to be proven right. Mark, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Oh, oh, we, what are we mentioning here, Tor? Stock draft? Stock draft, Mark. You and Ryan are in third place right now. Uh, your <laughs> Lululemon and uh, Netflix are up over 17% since April. So you, you, I don't know if we say take a bow, but, you know, you're up there.